Well, hello there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskind. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as the Jazz Piano Fundamental series with two different levels. You can order all of those fine books at jeremysiskind.com. We're going to do something maybe a little bit different today because it's not so much about playing. Um, this is going to be about composing, or, or maybe composing is too grand of a word. We're just going to be talking about writing a tune, and in particular, an AABA tune. Um, so if you wanted to write your very first AABA tune, how would you get started? And there's a lot of different ways to get started. You could start with the melody, the lyrics, but today I want to talk about how you might get started using particularly the harmony and knowledge of the form to write your AABA tune, okay? Um, so we're going to be using Misty as a, an example of a classic AABA tune. Sure, most of you are familiar with Misty. Oh, you can't see me at all. There you go. Um, but let's do a little bit of analysis. I'm going to play the A section for you. So a few things to know about AABA tunes, just by the numbers. So AABA tunes are typically 32 measures. Um, they typically have four eight-measure sections. And if you're not familiar with what this AABA means, each of the A sections are mostly the same. And the B section is the contrast, right? We call the B section the bridge. So I want to track what each of these sections does. And particularly, I want to look at the beginnings and endings of these sections um, for hints about how we can structure our tune. Okay, so uh, here's the A section for Misty. <laughs> Now I said that the two A sections are mostly the same, and that mostly is really key. Because to make an effective AABA tune, in general, not every single time, of course, people do all kinds of things, but in general, the cadence happens two measures before the end of the section. Okay, So you have six bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, in that sixth bar, you're generally going to have your two five leading to a one. Except, and Misty does this perfectly, we don't want it to be too settled the first time through because, of course, if it's too settled, it's going to feel like it's the ending of the tune. Um, so what do we do instead? This uh, Misty does a very typical thing. First of all, look, the melody doesn't go to the root. We're in the key of E-flat major. It doesn't go to E-flat. Instead, it goes to G, the third. So that sounds unresolved. And the chord also does not go to the one. It goes to a chord that's commonly substituted for the one chord, the three chord. And it does this pretty common jazz progression, the three, six, two, five. Okay, these are important things to notice. So it's, you know, the, there's a two, five progression in the sixth bar. And then in the seventh bar, the first time through, we avoid the tonic. And the second time through, we do the opposite. You can see here we do go to an E-flat in the melody. Here we do go to an E-flat chord in the harmony. Okay, let me play you the second A section so you can hear how it sounds when we go to the tonic note and tonic chord. <laughs> feels much more rested. Now let's listen to the bridge, and the job of a bridge is to be contrasting. And the biggest contrast I think we generally expect to hear in the bridge is that it goes away from the one chord. Even though we have a bunch of different chord progressions here, in general, the A section you know, is staying around the one chord. Or think about it this way, if the, a, uh, if the one chord were a planet, all of the chords in the A section were, are orbiting around the planet. But in the B section, they start orbiting around some different planets. Instead of Earth, we're going to Mars and Jupiter. And in this case, Mars and Jupiter are the four chord, right? You can see that we have a two, five, one progression, two, four. 
And then, interestingly, the next planet that we're that we're uh, orbiting around is G major, which isn't really even a chord that belongs to the key of E flat. How do I know it's G major? There's no G major chord, but we have a two to five progression in the key of G major. A minor seven is the two of G major. D seven is the five of G major. So it sounds like we're going to G major, even though we don't arrive there. So I'm gonna play uh, four bars before the bridge, and then I want you to listen for the bridge. about the cadence here, I told you we're going to be obsessed with the beginnings and endings of these phrases. And so the cadence here, again, happens two measures before the end of the phrase, right? And this is, I, I emphasize this because I often see students doing this wrong. I see them trying to do the cadence in the very last measure of the phrase. And here again, we're not resolving to the one, we're using this substitute for the one. We're using a three chord. And it substitutes for the one so well for two reasons. One is that it has two of the same three notes, right? If you think of just a G major, G minor triad, it's got a G and a B flat, which are two of the same notes that we have in an E flat triad, right? E flat triad has E flat, G, B flat. G triad has G, B flat, D. And just timing wise, it leads through the circle of fifths so that we arrive all the way back to the one chord on time. And now this A section, this final A section, will resemble the A section that goes to the second ending, or the second A section. We have the same cadence in measure six, leading in bar seven to the one. I think you guys know this who watch these videos. This portion is called the turnaround. It's in parentheses because we only do it if we're going back to the beginning. So every time, other than the very last time, we do the turnaround, but the very last time, we don't. Because the idea of the turnaround is that it's launching us back to the head. So um, this might not feel very creative, but you gotta start somewhere. If I'm going to write an AABA tune, I've got my blank manuscript up. First of all, I'm gonna write four bar phrases. I'm gonna measure them out. So that's four five, six, seven, eight, and I'm gonna have a first ending here at the end of eight measures. I know this is riveting YouTube content, Peep somebody making lines. And then I'm gonna have my second ending here. We always put a double bar line at the beginning and end of the bridge to mark the bridge as different than the rest of the tune. So the bridge itself is eight measures four, five, six, seven, eight. We put a double bar line at the end of the bridge. And then we have our final A section. Now, like I said, you know, things don't have to follow these rules every single time. You will find some exceptions. But what I would suggest is that we put in our cadences immediately, okay? Like I said, you can start with the melody, you can start with the lyrics, you can start with some sort of a mot motivic idea. I just want to try starting with harmony. So let's write this tune in the key of F major, just for kicks. And so if we're writing a tune in the key of F major, um, we want to have a 2-5 leading to F in bar 6. So I'm putting in that G minor 7 to C7 in the sixth measure of the A section. Now remember, the first time through, we don't want to resolve. So we're going to use the three chord instead. The second time through, we can resolve. So let's resolve that to F6. And then the exact same thing is going to happen. This is the last A, starting here. Right? This is the B. So the last eight bars, we're going to put in a two five, leading to one. 
And then we can put in, in, in parentheses, we can make our turnaround. Okay, so we've made pretty good progress here. Um, let's see, what to do next? So let's figure out the start of the tune. Now, Misty does happen to start on the one chord. It's in the key of E flat major, and it does start on an E flat major chord, but certainly not all tunes do. Um, I mean, you could probably think offhand of tunes like Fly Me to the Moon that start on the sixth chord. All the Things You Are starts on the sixth chord. But not for me, usually starts on the two chord or the five of five. Um, there's all kinds of tunes that start away from the tonic. But let's keep things simple. It's our first AABA tune. Let's let's put in uh, let's put in an F major seven. You might wonder why F six here, but F major seven there, and the reason is that we use sixth chords when we expect the root to be in the melody, and here we would expect the root to be in the melody. Remember, in the first ending, we want to avoid the root, we want to avoid the tonic note, but then in the second ending, we're going to aim for that tonic note so that it feels resolved. So the major seventh conflicts with that root note, so that's a good time to use a sixth chord. Okay, so how are we going to fill in these, you know, measures two, three, four, or five, where we don't have any chords? How, how does one do that? Well, there's certainly not one answer. It's a complicated answer. But let me give you a suggestion as to get started. So what, what I want to do is put in diatonic chords from F major and then set them up, lead into them with two five progressions. Basically make them the one of the two five progressions. So, okay, diatonic chords of, C, of F major, these are chords, if you don't uh, know the word diatonic, these are words, these are chords that don't need any flats or sharps added in order uh, from the F major key signature. And it's always going to be the case in a major key that the 1, 4, and 5 are going to be major. When I say 1, 4, and 5, I mean the triads built on the first fourth and fifth degree of the scale, and the two, three, and six are going to be minor. The seventh, the chord built on the seventh, we're generally not going to use. It's kind of a strange tonality to use. So let's just do this in the abstract first. We know a two, five, one to F is going to be G minor seven to C seven to F major. If we're going to G minor, this is a minor key center, so we're going to do a minor 2, 5, 1. We'll do A half diminished to D7 flat 9 to G minor. Same thing, if we're going to A minor, we do something like B half diminished to E7 flat 9 to A minor. If we're going to B flat, this is a major key, C minor 7 to F7 to B flat. Okay, Why, are, why am I encouraging you to do this? So these chords make sense in F major. And two five ones are common in jazz and, and American songbook style harmony. So by kind of combining these two things, we can make something that makes a lot of sense. So now let's come back here. I'm going to choose kind of at random. Let's, um, let's aim for G minor here. And so in this measure, in measure two, I'm going to put a two five leading to G minor. It's going to be A half diminished seventh to D7 flat nine. It goes to G minor. I'll tell you what, let's, let's keep this theme going of moving up, right? F to G is moving up, G to A is moving up. And so I'm here in measure four, I'm going to make a two five leading to A minor. And I'm noticing here that if I just add one more chord in the circle of fifths, it'll set up the G minor seven well. So I think I actually kind of came up with a cool progression. Let's see how it sounds. Uh, so F major. Hey, that's cool. It kind of sounds like it, the beginning of it could happen to you. But It Could Happen With You, of course, is not an AABA tune. So we're making almost an AABA version of It Could Happen To You. 
So you could choose different things. You could also choose uh, just for instance, I, I like this progression, so I'm going to put it back. But you know, we could change up the harmonic rhythm. We could decide to put G minor here and do then a quick A7, A, a half diminished to D7. We could alter that. We're gonna put it back the way it was. Nope, that's as far back as it will undo for me. That's okay. I remember. Okay, and then all right. So I'm going to copy this into the last A section. Let's see how well this works. Ah. Pretty decent. <laughs> There's some replicated measure lines, but we'll take care of that. Um, all right, so then we're kind of left with the bridge. Now, remember, this is our time to explore. So far, everything, even when we're, we're using some chords, you know, that are related to F major, it's still, it's all coming back to F major. But here's a chance to go away from F major. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to decide somewhat randomly, but I'm going to decide we're going to aim for D flat major here. So the reason I guess that chord came to mind is I was thinking of chords that also have an F natural in them, because that gives some sort of a commonality. Okay, we've got that D minor, D major. Just like all of our other chords, we're going to set it up with a 2-5 one. Yes, there are ways to be more creative here, but this is a great place to start. Um, and then let's do something maybe a little bit closer to F major. Uh, what about B flat minor? Because that's like the minor four of F, but it's also related to D flat. So I'm gonna put B flat minor here. I'm gonna do a two five leading to B flat minor. And now remember in Misty, these last two bars set us up to go back to the tonic. All right, so um, we need to figure out a way. Maybe it could be a three, six, two, five, one. Maybe it could be just a two, five, one. Let's try just a two, five, one, just to do something a little bit different than Misty. So I'm just putting in a two, five to F, pretty nice and simple. And, you know, so now we're forced with this challenge of how do we bridge between B flat minor seven and G minor seven? What if, we make this a 2-5, so B flat to E flat, and then we do a 2-5 a half step down, and the D becomes the 5 of G minor. So I'm always trying to form relations. So these two are related because they're related by a half step. And then we're related to the G minor because we're going through the circle of fifths here. So let me play you this whole progression. I'll play it without a melody for now. Um, back to the beginning. B section. good progression, right? And I'm just using these kind of connecting devices. What are the connecting devices? Picking chords related to F, aiming for them. I'm figuring out the cadences ahead of time, right? I'm, I know what I'm aiming for so that I'm not just writing randomly. Um, and then, you know, I'm just constantly adding two fives into things because two fives set up something. They make it sound really intentional. So I'm going to make one more video where I'm going to keep this progression on my screen and I'm going to show you how we then go about writing a melody.
to this progression. So stay tuned <laughs> for the grand finale. Uh, please like, subscribe, um, and comment with, uh, with Misty if you like this. See you later.